Howdy folks and welcome back to the next Marvel's Agent, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I had it right. I stumbled over my words. Alien Commies from the Future. Season 7, Episode 3. With a, with a title like that, Alien Commies, you gotta know it's around probably the 50s if it's in the U.S., right? Because that's when was the height of the Cold War, War panic over the communist Soviets who are planning on destroying America and invading and all that. So that's when that was that fear was that at its highest, and that's when you heard a lot of commies. Everybody was talking about commies, commies this, commies that. Um, it happened a bit in the sixties and seventies too, but I mean, mostly it was the fifties. So that would be fitting for this time period. Um, I'm presuming that that's where they jumped to because I remember looking at the trailer and thinking that some of the time periods were obviously 1931, looked like the fifties. Um, the one that was kind of noir almost. And then it looked like they were in the 70s at one point. Uh, I wasn't quite sure. Um, and then who knows after that. So let's find out. Um, they had to jump. They left Enoch behind. Enoch has to go the long way. Um, looks like he's working with Patton Oswalt's character. And uh, is going the long way. Is he going to show up in this episode? That's the question. Is he returning now? Or is that actor going to be out for a while? Because I don't, re I don't recall him being announced as a regular for the, for the final season which would mean he's probably going to be out for a while. But theoretically, if he's moving forward in time, he's going to be able to know. You would think he'd be able to figure out if they're there and meet them. He doesn't know they're going to show up at that time, right? Because he's living through this time. He doesn't, he doesn't have any kind of insight into when they appear next. So he has to figure it out once they appear or they have to reach out to him one way or the other. So I don't know. Maybe they won't have time. Find out. On Marvel's... So far, can't tell. Okay, vehicle looks 50s-ish. That doesn't mean it's a new car. Okay. You shouldn't be paying more attention to her. Isn't this a little boring? There you go. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, the UFO is our our heroes. A handheld's got a scanner that checks frequencies that Come on now. It's it's got a scanner built in. That's fine to check, you know, commonly used frequencies maybe. I get it, but to check like AM frequencies? Come on. It is a cute device though to figure out what where they are. Please tell me that's an old the brand new 1955 Thunderbird. or 1954 if car companies do it right. Right, cuz cars these days or car companies these days, right? They release the next the all new model the year before. I don't know, did they do that in 55? Is this 54 or 55? I think they're going to say it's 55, but I was just curious. In the sky, Lake, Nevada. Oh boy. Area 51. Home of Area 51. Oh, they're doing new ones for every time period. That's cool. You get like one of the, the, the title sequence from like like the, uh, the 50s monster movies. Like Them. Remember that movie? I don't know if you've ever seen it, but the one with the giant ants. Um, uh, the, the blob one. Uh, boy. All sorts of, of movies from that time period had title cards like this. That's cool that they're doing different title cards for every every era, for every decade or wherever they land. Very cool. In their captivity, why are we set to... One benefit the Chromacons have right now, at least those two guys, they actually don't need new faces or even new clothes. Yeah, they're 1931 New York City, New York PD uniforms, but nobody would really give them a lot of second looks. They'd they'd recognize them as police in 1955. Um, they might not recognize the uniform in Nevada, um, but, uh, you know, at least they're not, like, really sticking out like a sore thumb. Like, well, the, maybe like she would, but I don't know. I, I didn't get a good look at what she's wearing, but she looks like she'd be wearing something at that time period, too, maybe. So, yeah, who knows? But it doesn't look like they need new costumes, but I'm sure they'll get them. Have taken faces. Is Helios still a viable plan? Ooh! Did you hear what he said? Others have been sent in have taken faces. So there's other chronicoms here in this time period that we're going to encounter and maybe we as the audience won't know that they are for a while. That's kind of cool. What exactly is that device? I'm wondering if it was supposed to be some sort of a nuclear device. Didn't really look like one. Then again, I wouldn't consider myself an expert on nuclear devices. I've only seen, you know... Some pictures and diagrams like what everybody's seen, the publicly available stuff, so I don't know, maybe. Oh, 
energy than we'll ever require again. A jump forward takes less. What do you mean less? Ooh, jumping forward takes less time. So the the implication is we're only going to go forward in time. But she said it takes that it can we can jump back in time. It takes more of the monolith. So I'm wondering, are we ever going to jump back in time during the course of this final season? Maybe one episode where they have to go back. Maybe the finale, they have to go back in time or something. Interesting. Maybe that's when they're going to meet Captain America. No, I'm just kidding. There's a shield base. We do. All the areas are. <laughs> Conspiracy me was so right. <laughs> Green Lake was an incubator for early space. Ion fusion reactor, but... It ah. Ion fusion reactor. Now, could they be attempting to take it and kind of like turn it into a bomb? Um, make it go critical, super critical, or or something, or, or you know, unstabilized, destabilized, make it blow up, or are they thinking of using it for a power source? Fully realized in the tech was mothballed. I fully realized not tech forever. mothballed, not forever. The I'm from ion fusion was used to power the big weapons, ship to ship. Ah. Well, they did just find out that we have a space. So they are planning to use it for power, to power weapons, maybe. Nice, nice vista. That's pretty. At least this waitress is hey, cold to everybody. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Drinks the coffee and he's tied up in some clean room, unconscious. Going to be she Simmons going to be his wife, his secretary, probably secretary, right? Be official or assistant. Ooh, he's a man in black. She's a woman in black. I don't need to be on the list. Is she pretending to be Peggy Carter? Right. Is that what that? Sorry, man. Is that it's what that wrong. says? Play Miss Carter. Yeah, that's awesome. Fair dollars at work. Certainly, there's going to be somebody in here who's met Peggy Carter. Thirty feet. Wow, thirty feet. Give me an arrow. Helios. But Helios was abandoned. No, oh, he's taking pictures. <laughs> cool. Great. That's so far. When I say the word, moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> moist. Please, please stop. Why do some people have a reaction to that word like that? Beware. Maybe the real Peggy Carter. Next. We can only wish. Oh, we know him. The cane's a dead giveaway. It's our Agent Carter guest star. Oh boy. He has definitely met Peggy Carter. Oh boy. This is not going to go well. Poor Deke. I think he's outgrown his fascination, his, his, uh, his crush on Daisy. Um, and I think that that's actually possibly making her actually attracted to him in a way. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. I know. He's Peggy Carter's old partner. Uh oh. She realizes what's going to happen. Carter. That's not Agent Carter. Flash. Wow. Glad to finally put a face to the name. He's playing along Surprise. until he can figure out what she's up to. Up in our patch, before he just arrests her. <laughs> I apologize for the short notice, but we had to act quick. No, imagine that. <laughs> right on our noses. I knew. Out, don't you? He didn't play along long enough to figure out what she was up to. Now he has to interrogate her. Okay. How to go? So are they trying to? These are some of Shield's earliest power players. Are they trying? He called me Oriental. I'm sorry. Just reading the uh, the subtitle. Um, are they trying to kill them to disrupt Shield at this point by killing all of the leaders? Is that their play? Oriental. Okay. What makes him think it's going to be any different just because he's white? If he, if this guy thinks that they're communists, he's going to think he's a communist. Keep those two in holding and give me everything. Visitor logs. We need to root it out right now before it takes hold. Oh, this is cool. So Sousa knew that he didn't know it was Hydra, but he knew that there were bad seeds inside S.H.I.E.L.D. that they'd been infiltrated. That's cool. I like it. 
Look, all I can say. If that thing goes off, it could take out the entire brain trust of Shield. Yep, they're trying to use it to, to kill the the Shield members. I'm thinking that that DoD guy they've got stuck in the tent with him biting the ropes. He's gonna break out at some point, right? And we're gonna have this this great scene where he's like, "What is this?" <laughs> Inside the ship scene. Um, but yeah, I figured he'd expect or suspect immediately. Doesn't matter the color of his skin that he thinks they're all commies, and especially since he did a poor job of interrogating him. But uh, I figured he'd just sus- real or suspect he was also a Russian so, or a Soviet. So. Well, in the cavalry. The cavalry. Well, that's. That's me, yeah. Is this still an unfeeling kill bot? Can be resolved. And it, it is There's a Chronicom. Yep. I'm curious what she's interfacing with. The 1955's technology, this is not a solid state system. There's no digital technology here. These are all wires and switches. How is she interfacing with anything? And what is she interfacing with? It's for target practice. Whoa, impressive. But still. Sexist? Yeah. Okay, I know a bit about aviation. Sure, some women were towing targets. Uh, a great number of women who got their start in the military in flying were ferrying aircraft. They weren't, I mean, sure, some were towing targets. I get you, but the way May described it, it's like, oh, that's all they did. All they let them do was tow targets. No, they, they did especially during the war. For goodness sake, the WASP program? Oh, wow. Um, they, they ferried airplanes around the world. Uh, they did an incredible job. They test flew airplanes off the factory. They did a lot. They didn't just tow targets. That's that's really demeaning. So I know you're eager to be in the field, but these are civilian. And so much for Sousa. <laughs> oh, she's definitely not phased. Kind of an obvious uh, Chronicom, right? Uh oh, something's happening to me. Flashbacks, PTSD. She actually felt panic. He'll know what Shield is, and he'll see the Shield logos all over the place, right? So they can explain that it's Shield, and he might buy that. Okay, that's Max's way of explaining. <laughs> Just rather not. So they've powered it up, but they don't have enough power to actually set it off. That's what she's going, the Chronicom's going to do, is to sacrifice herself to generate a burst of energy enough to make it actually go off, right? Right? If I understand correctly. Another Chronicom. Colson likes being a superhero. Colson bot. Oh, that also affected Coulson Bot, unfortunately. Yay on Simmons for increasing the effectiveness of the of the EMP, essentially, and uh, setting it off. That's cool, but we need to get Coulson Bot back. <laughs> do the LMDs have? Some, okay, I was going to say, do they have some kind of hardening against EMPs? Uh, there's some kind of activity there because, I mean. If they have some kind of shielding or I don't know how they could sense quickly enough to protect their core or something, but maybe they do. Maybe they have a core system that's shielded from an EMP and then their external systems that drive, you know, the, the, the body and make the body move and all the stuff that makes it look like they're alive. Maybe all that stuff is exposed and can be shut off, fried, whatever and by an EMP. It, it really fries it really. Um, so he could be rebuilding, and if there's nanites involved, maybe the nan- it's sending out nanites to like repair everything or something. I don't know, but it looks like the core of Coulson Bot was was protected. Let's see what the final scene is. Doctor, you will be probed. Probe. Yes, yes, <laughs> I love it. The probing thing didn't start, I don't think, this early. I think the uh, whole thing about, well, they probed me. Didn't start to like the 60s or some 70s or something, right? But still. <laughs> Communists from the future. But they're also aliens.
Oh man, yeah. I, they they took a couple liberties with history. Um, they got the gist of things right, but a couple things were kind of kind of nitpicky about the history in this. But that's fine. Um, it's it's entertainment. It's fiction. As long as they're you know people aren't believing every last little detail that they're showing, uh, that's cool. Like the aliens probing thing. I don't think I can do a little bit of research. There's no reason why I couldn't do a little bit of research, right? Okay, so it didn't take long to find a hit on Reddit now. Not necessarily the most trustworthy source in the world, but this person seems to know. He's a moderator of Ask Historians. Of course, especially he's medieval and earliest modern Europe, but this seems to be a fascination of his. Is it him? I don't know. Him or her. Um, but uh, apparently Betty and Barney uh, Hill from 1961, uh, Barney Hill was the first known abductee to report a probe of some sort being inserted into his rectum. So I was right. It wasn't in the 50s. It was in the 60s that that started becoming a thing. Uh, so there's one little ding, like I'm, I'm saying. Like I said, it's not a big deal. It's just, as I went along in my life, I've learned little things, little bits of tidbits here. I like, I like learning. And so when they say something which is contrary to what I know to be the truth or know to be a fact... It kind of bu bu bugs me a little bit. Doesn't bug me too much. It's still love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's just that that one kind of bugged me. And also, I need to look up the uh, women pilots in the 50s. Just doing a little bit of research about women in aviation in the 1950s. Got up a timeline of women in aviation. And it, it reveals some things I talked about that I've, I've come across before. I mean, 1941, Jacqueline Cochran, who, as you see here, was in the military. Um, first woman to fly a bomber across the North Atlantic. Um, you get uh, women being used, and it talks about more than just the United States, but I think that agents feel was talking about the United States. But um, you get right here, 1944, first Chinese-American woman to fly for the U.S. military as a member of the WASPs, the Women Air Force Service Pilots. Um, so that's cool. Uh, it was disbanded in 1944, but um, they continue on and doing all sorts of things uh, in, in their lives. And down here is a very interesting one in 1954. That I found, or 1953, Jackie Cochran's back. She becomes the first woman to break the sound barrier. See, what I mean is, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of got the, gave the impression women were just allowed to tow targets for men. But women were doing all sorts of incredible things. Women were doing things men, male pilots couldn't do. Breaking the sound barrier. Uh, other men had done it, but a lot of men hadn't. So that's just really cool. You know, all sorts of stuff. So, it, it again... You learn these little things as you go along when history is something that is really cool and fascinating to you, and aviation especially in this case. And then they say something which kind of contrary to reality, and it, but still, it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I love it. It's fun. And it's just fiction. And I guess somebody might even argue it's, it's Marvel. It could be an alternate timeline. There you go. It's an alternate timeline. Anal probing happened. By 1955, it was a thing that people talked about that was known in popular culture. And um, women only towed targets, and that's all they ever did in aviation in the military, in, in this timeline. Okay, I'll buy it. It's a sad timeline, but okay. <laughs> um, so Colson, I hope he comes back. Uh, looks like he is. I think that's why they showed the little you know, lights going on, a little electricity thing in, in behind his eyes. I think that means he's coming back. Um, it looks like we're continuing in this time period. It looks like they're doing two episodes, maybe, per time period. So we're going to get a little bit more of our friend from Agent Carter, who may finally come to realize. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up, he ends up learning who they are, you know, that they're shield from the future. and That's all he really needs to know, but I, I bet you he learns that, uh, would be my guess. Um... They defeated the attempt to kill everybody with the device. Uh, so that was, that seemed to be all they wanted to do here. But they haven't left this time period, and all of those people that they were trying to kill are still there. So the Chronicoms, who are not the two that we saw, who were the other two, remember he pointed out there were others that had taken faces. The two main ones are probably going to be deployed now to go actually find out some, figure out some way to kill them the hard way or find some other way to kill them. And our guys have to stop them, of course. And I think that's when our hero from, uh, from Agent Carter will 
will will realize that they're the good guys too and and fight on their side, you know. I hope. <laughs> anyway, a lot of cool stuff. A couple of little nitpicky things for somebody who likes history like me, but that's fine. Uh, still enjoyed it. Enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. I, I love the humor on the characters, and I am looking forward to more. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Was I being too picky? Probably. I'm sorry. Just the way I am. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.